Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and berries. This is Magic Brad here. I'm broadcasting live from the Mall of America Radisson Blue Hotel because I'm here with the MINFIA. And MINFIA stands for Minnesota Festival and Events Association. So I'm here at this conference, this convention, which is interesting. And I'll share a little bit about that when I get my friend Bo out of the green room. But uh, they are the event people. They are Minnesota festivals and events. They're the people that put together all the different fairs and festivals and events and uh, so they know about this social distancing thing and bringing events back and doing live events virtual events and hybrid events so let me go grab my friend Bo one second there he is hey buddy how are you you have a halo do I <laughs> no you got the big wheel behind you <laughs> the thing behind me that looks ridiculous yes. doesn't it? you look like a Christmas card it's <laughs> like an old movie reel so I've got a room that was oh, that what that is my basement and I and I and I decided to make it a room to watch some TV, and uh, so that's what that is. So, okay. yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it's something else, but it looked like a wheel, uh, a movie reel. So that's what we put up. Yeah, that works good. No, you look like like a Christmas card, like an angel, and you got the big halo going right. Just flat out creepy. Hey, your hey. lighting's better. You look great. You were back in your element. I'd love to see you in your red suit. Yes, there we go. Ta -da, ta -da. Yeah. Yes, we had a, the danger committee was here yesterday opening up and a guy talked about innovation and he did the, their, their knife throwers and yo-yo jugglers and all that crazy stuff. Yeah. So it was fun seeing that. Um, there was some people that talked about like experiential marketing where they'll take a whole building and paint the sides of the sides of the building to make it look like something. So this guy was an experiential marketer. There's a guy from Bentleyville that's up in Duluth, that light show. Oh yeah, that's really popular. I mean, I wanted to go up there. There was a big yeah. Jeep ride through for Bentleyville, and I wanted to be a part of that, but it didn't happen. So. Yep, they had uh, did it with cars instead of walk through, and so that the Minnesota Festival Events Association this here, it's an organization of all the planners and the people that do like the Basilica Block Party and the Canterbury Park and the, the Derby Days or the the Hopkins Raspberry Festival or Fridley 49ers or Lumberjack Days in Stillwater or all those different uh, holodazzle, all that stuff. So that's all these people that do all these things and they're getting educated on how are we going to do this now with social distancing and all that stuff. And yeah, they got very interesting ways of doing it too. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm happy that when the conversation continues and that things are being planned, right? And, and things might be opening up here soon. I love it. I love it. Well, it's happening as I predicted. Um, a lot of people were concerned, oh, there's no, not going to be an event. Everything's going to be a vibe, uh, virtual event. But what they're planning on is more of a hybrid event and keeping the virtual element. So they're learning how to do all this stuff virtually. And then they're going to be starting to slowly get into the live in-person events, but they're going to keep the virtual element because it's a new revenue stream. It's a new way of getting people involved and funding. You know, you can, you can sell sponsorships and do it live. Sure. So they're broadcasting live here in the other room too. Yeah. So it's awesome. I, you know, I was on a, a it was in a virtual board meeting yesterday. Um, and that was one of the things we discussed is that, you know, some of us were like, I hope they keep some of the virtual things. We've been able to go to more events, been able to go to more networking things, been in, you know, involved in groups of 500 that I would just would have never had access to or been part of before. So I hope some of it continues. I still want the person, the shoulder to shoulder, the handshakes, but I love the ability to pop into other meetings and, and meet new people. And, and yeah, it's great. Well, it's pretty impressive how fast technology and all the vendors and suppliers came up with ways of doing this. Yeah. All, a lot of the videographers learned how to do the virtual events and yeah. the software developers figured out how to create exhibit booths and, and the networking. And it's pretty amazing how innovative everybody got. And a lot of what people were saying is they actually did better in some circumstances because now their marketplace is considerably bigger. Sure. And they, they uh, ha had methods of charging for that. So instead of charging, you know, a hundred bucks for a conference, you can charge $20 for a conference and get it out to 30 times more people. Right. It's pretty right. Fascinating. And well, we look at, you know, in the beginning, uh, last March when like, for example, AGC, right. Uh, Accelerated global connections, you know, it was a stressful time for Travis and, and all those involved. Right. Because the, the shutdown and that was how it, it was event networking 
Um, but you, we talked about four. I mean, he pivoted really well. And now the, I mean, it's like, it feels like every day there's another event going on for AGC across the country somewhere that right. I can tune into and, and go into a Zoom room and network with more people. So it's, yeah, the audience was, has been able to be broadened. Um, and you have the ability to grow quicker in that regard. And I, right. it's amazing. So, yeah. And um, now what's happening because there's so much of this stuff happening and that's kind of what I want to seg segue into as far as this topic of how using direct mail is going to separate your virtual event from everybody else's virtual event. Because this stuff is so easy to do with, you just get a Zoom. Now mm -hmm. you can create a graphic with Canva. And you yeah. can create an event and put it on Eventbrite and Facebook. You can advertise, you can start making money doing this thing. A lot of people are doing it because it's fairly easy to do. We're back in the olden days. You used to have to hire a graphic designer. You had to go to a printer, get the thing sure. printed right. Should I print 500? Should I print 5,000? Now there's no none of those obstacles and a lot of people are doing it. So how do you separate your event from somebody else's? Because there's only 24 hours in a day. Right. And Mailbox power. I'm going <laughs> ah, to grab a little link here. <laughs> Hence. Da -da, mailbox there power. It is. So for those that don't know what mailbox power is, it's exactly that. Using your physical mailbox rather than your inbox and mailing physical packages, gifts, cards, and things to people. And uh, instead of like the inbox, they just delete, delete, delete. Or sometimes they don't get delivered. Sometimes they don't get opened. These packages get opened. And when you use it for your live event, say you got 12 events potentially that you could go to, sure. which one are you going to go to? Probably the one yeah. that mailed you a package with a bunch of cards that had little emojis on and sure. little toys and gifts and tchotchkes and things that you can participate in the event. And then there's more engagement. It's more interactive. You're going to stick with that than you are somebody's just totally electronic event. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have to stand out, right? So if you're, if you're competing with other events, what are you going to do that's different? That gives them a compelling reason to attend yours. And mm -hmm. that's one of the easiest ways is to, is to target via direct mail. We talked whether it be the events, events. I, I watched uh, part of the mailbox power uh, presentation they had on YouTube yesterday and, and live. And it was about uh, a realtor and sorry about the distraction, my noise, I've got a little construction okay. happening. Oh, good. Um, but we'll talk about your orange juice problem here in a second. In fact, you're not drinking coffee is offensive. But the uh, I, I watched this and it was a, a, a real, real estate agent who, <laughs> there it is, um, a real estate agent that uh, really kind of specializes in for sale by owners. And he never liked making calls his entire career. <laughs> is this magic? He's switching fluids on me. Um, <laughs> yeah, beverage is going on here. Yeah, oh, um, but but the uh, he he special he uses FSBOs or expired listings, and he does not like and never has liked calling people. FSBO and, for sale by owner. Right, and his if anybody hasn't seen this, if you're a real estate agent, you're in that space, and that's how you cultivate some of your potential leads. This guy's presentation yesterday was over the top. He told you step by step exactly how he's doing, and the millions of dollars in real estate um, sales, which translates into tens of thousands or more of real estate commission. Uh, it was amazing, and it's by using this system, it's changed his whole way of marketing. But it's let's really stay with not, the events, you know. It's not really not rocket science to figure it out. I mean, you you no. can just go. You can go to the store and buy a but you know. I'll have a hundred of those and a hundred of those and a hundred of those and go get a bunch of boxes and a hundred boxes and go get a bunch, bunch of tape and tape the boxes together, right. take them to the post office and ship them off to your people with all your labels. Or you can take your list of attendees, upload it into mailbox power in a pre-done campaign and upload it and let it go. Completely. Because what happens is they get a, they could, they could get a postcard that says save the date yep. and then, or, or even, you know, register today. Yep. Then you get them into the thing and then they go to the next level and it gets another little package that says, by the way, you know, grab a cup of coffee and a cup, have a couple of brownies and tune into this pre event, you know, exactly. or a webinar we're doing. And then the day of the conference, they got this box that comes to them with a bunch, like I said, postcards and stuff in it that have different emojis or something they could cut up sure. and turn into something. You just get creative with it yeah. instead of doing it with automated emails because they're going to get lost. Yeah, I, mean, I grew up going to that all the time. Someone says, hey, you know, tune into this webinar. And then when it's the day of the webinar, I'm looking for the email. Yeah. 
Well, I, I watched a thing on Monday um, uh, from our friend Casey, and uh, he shared shared an example of like a box. And, you know, it, so there was different speakers that were going to be presenting, right, on this Zoom and the virtual event. And they, they got a box that had, you know, the emoji cards and all that stuff, too, so it could be interactive. But it even had speaker snacks, right? It had brownies, and the label said speaker snacks baked especially for. Like, it was so clever. Um, but they really appreciated it. And many of the attendees were just, I'm not sure how you did this, but this must have taken a substantial amount of time. And I really appreciate that. And we both know that time is not the challenge. Uh, oh. I helped somebody yesterday, a real estate agent who just had two, landed two listings. And he says, I, I just want to send something to say, thanks for choosing me. Let's do this. So well, it didn't take very long. When you, you know? said the, you know, the speaker snacks thing and have the brownies and a little uh, yeah. RPG coffee or whatever, what people don't realize is the mailbox power system has a print merge function. So each individually wrapped package of brownies says speaker snack specifically for Bo Young, right. Brad Goodham, Terry right. Henderson. It's, it's individually personalized and you don't have to retype all that. It's print right. merged in the, the CSV file. Yeah. So it's it's very, very, it's almost made for this event type industry. I know that a lot of people in real estate are doing it, but for the event industry, when you've got, <clears throat> there's got to be 80 people here. Sure. They could have uploaded this whole thing and then sent something to each individual. I mean, they did a really good job of getting it all done with the little name badges and then all the list of events and stuff. The things yeah. are here. And it's got all the fancy tchotchkes and stuff on there. Yeah, that's really well. well and you look at that thing you just showed, right? Well, Mailbox Power just added what you would call luggage tags, which could be the exact right. same thing that you had. They could have done exactly. the same thing had it been personalized and each one of them would have shown up in a box, right? For if somebody, and, and it's not too late. So the, the organizer of this event, if they wanted to send a thank you to everybody that was per, a participant now, they could easily do that and send a thank you to everybody. And that's awesome. You know? oh, yeah, the luggage tags are like the backstage pass at a concert or whatever. Absolutely. And they could send those in advance and say, bring your luggage tag. This will get you in. You don't have to wait in line just to right. flash your badge and go inside. They're like $8 or something. They're not they're not overly priced and they can be completely personalized. And if they don't have to order a minimum of 1000 or 100 or 50 or whatever. It's just one off personalized. So, yeah, I, the options are endless. Um, they just absolutely That's what's endless. very interesting to me about it, of how powerful it is. And that it's... it's um, it's gratifying seeing something go back into the physical world because this digital thing where stuff gets lost and I, I get a lot of emails and I end up, I, I don't sort them through them. I actually click the little garbage can. That's how I get, <laughs> get rid of the ones that I know that I'm not going to use because they're for an event that's happening and I can't go. So what do I do? I delete it. Right. Right. Whereas if it was a postcard that I couldn't go, I would go, you know, next year, next year yeah. I'm going to go, or maybe next month I'm going to go. Well, so, and you know, you go back to direct mail and how you might, the email you get gets in the trash can, maybe it even gets filed as a to look at later and you never get around to it, right? But uh, this this guy that shared, uh, the real estate agent yesterday that shared, he talked about how he tracks, you know, how many mailers he sends to people, right? He knows, he's, he's, he does the math and he knows how much it costs him for the lead and this and that. But he might have sent 20 some mailers over the course of a few years and, and nothing happened. But that last one, it, he knows that that was the, and they'll tell him that, that this was the last one that they received, but it, the timing was not right until that time. So just well, stay top of mind, stay in front of them consistently. It the whole works. concept of marketing is maybe it's something didn't happen, you know, that you can actually measure. Like yeah. I have my friend, Howard Walsey, he's got kids dance. And he said, you know, I, I was, I exhibited at your show, but I really didn't get much from it. I thought you're wrong, Howard, because his company, when I did the video, the for the expo yeah there's his kid with his kids dance logo on the t-shirt that's been going out thousands of times yeah still still <laughs> so that's that's the thumbnail on the youtube video so he's getting logo recognition still right <laughs> there's value there yeah and it doesn't maybe have a direct hey i want to hire you for the shakopee derby days sure but down the road when someone's going you know i was at the menfia conference and i saw that howard guy with the kids dance shirt I wonder how I get, and then they see that logo on the pro, the video that I shove out there somewhere. It goes top of mind. Right. And then they get a postcard that has that logo on there again. They go, yep. you know what? I got to get a hold of this guy because he does this really cool thing for kids. We need that at the sure. event. 
And maybe the postcard's got a QR code that takes you to a video of what the heck this guy does, right? I mean, it just exactly. all goes together. It integrates exactly. the digital and the physical, and that's the way to do it. <laughs> you know, they, they had the QR code thing at a thing too. They had a little, uh, what do they call those those uh, rock climbing clamps? Oh yeah, yeah. What are those yeah, called? Like carabiners or whatever they're. Uh, yeah, carabiners. Yeah, I don't even know. They had a little dangly on with a QR code. Yeah, and it's funny the QR code. So just our chamber of commerce, right? Uh, in Hutchinson here, we have always had table tents. So they would print these, it'd have the events, you had to get in like two, three months early, uh, what your business was gonna host for that, you know, that month, on what day, what time, and then they would put these around all the restaurants, and many of the businesses would have these on the tables. And so you could, as you were just sitting there, you just would look around, oh, that's coming up, right? That's cool. So it was some advertising, it didn't cost you a lot of money to do it, well, but guess what they did? They realized that the restaurants aren't gonna allow these things in. They don't want to print them anymore. They don't want to do the the work. The last set never made it to the delivery because they wouldn't let them in. Guess what they did? They now have a QR code. They printed a bunch of stickers. Those are getting delivered to the businesses. They're going to put those in different places and anybody in there can scan it. And it takes right. them to a live updated calendar of events. Brilliant pivot, right? It saves them money. It gets it's actually better, more accessible, and it's a less cost now for the business to advertise their event. I love it. Yeah, Everybody right. understands the QR code now. Another cool thing about the mailbox power thing is you, if you get creative, you know, you got a greeting card that folds from the top down. Mm -hmm. Well, wipe the slate clean, start blank, and now you can make a table tent out of these cards. They don't have to be yeah. greeting cards. They could be table tents. You're right. You just got to get well, creative. Yeah, just just like the postcards can be door hangers. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they could be whatever you want them to be, right? You just put a little thing, you got to cut it out. So, yeah, there's uh, <laughs> the opportunity. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, somebody watching and I forgot. Uh, did, oh, it's our friend Mike Wilkie. My... Mike again, I like it. Yes. He's paying attention. Hi, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I didn't see it out the corner of my eye there. That's all right. Anyways, we've gone for uh, what? 17 I minutes. I've yeah. got to get back in the conference here and go get edumacated. Okay. So I'm going to sign this off. But again, Bo, as far as appreciation goes and the appreciation show and gratitude, I appreciate you. You're here. Ditto. You show up. It's uh, it's working. This is a very interesting momentum we've got here. And I know that it's, it's gaining momentum because people are starting to notice it. And I'm starting to see traffic in some of my, my tracking links and all that kind of stuff. Awesome. It's just a matter of time. Awesome. Ooh. Hey, I, I shared something yesterday and I, I thought I'd share it again. Uh, uh, it wasn't, I didn't find this on the internet. It just kind of came to me as I was driving yesterday, but it's, uh, if you get, I don't know what exa exactly it was, but something, if you give without the intention to receive, you receive more than you could ever give. Mm -hmm. And well, I, I think we're trying to do that right now, right? Is just by sharing a process, sharing a system that can help you be a giver. Um, because I know, I don't know about you, but when I go, when I leave this planet, I want to be known as somebody that gave more than I took. Right. You know? And uh, I, if that's if that's what happens, perfect. So I am grateful for you. I'm thankful that you give uh, your time and your energy to, to me. And 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 I really appreciate you, man. I was going to say when when you leave the planet and uh, if you give enough, you might get a chance to come back. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. yeah. They might have laid your back. Okay, Bo, yeah. I'm going to pop That's in the green room and sign this off. Okay. See you, buddy. Well, there we go. There's my friend, Bo. I got to get back into the conference, but um, hope you enjoyed what we're talking about. Uh, mailbox power right here. It's a pretty cool thing. If you have any questions, talk to me or Bo or any other mailbox power representative. It's a cool platform. And I know that you need to kind of get inside to understand what's what it's all about. But it's, uh, it's very interesting. It's uh, leaving this digital world into the physical world and using the digital world to do so. So, okay, peace of and happiness, Magic Bread signing off. I'm gonna do my traditional uh, farewell. <laughs>